Earlier this week, Ubuntu announced plans to integrate Rust-based implementations of essential system utilities, starting with the upcoming Ubuntu 25.10 release. The plan is to use programs from UUtils, which has got to be the biggest rewrite in Rust project ever, in terms of how prolific it could become if experiments like this one that Ubuntu will be conducting are successful. The core utils like LS and CP are used on every Unix-like operating system out there. So servers, firewalls, embedded devices, Macs, Linux, Android, and every smart whatever is using these programs under the hood. So replacing these essential tools that the world has depended on for decades with Rust rewrites is both interesting and really terrifying. So the goals that usually drive a Rust rewrite or just choosing to write something in Rust to begin with versus another language is for it to be blazingly fast and memory safe. Now to GNU's credit, their implementation of the core utils actually has a really amazing track record with security and hasn't had that many major vulnerabilities discovered in it over the last 20 years. But there have been memory bugs in core utils like Split as recently as last year. And if it had been written in Rust, there wouldn't have been a heap-based buffer overflow bug in it. And sure enough, if we read the disclosure on ubuntu.com that goes into the reasoning, the enhanced resilience and safety that is more easily achieved with Rust ports are what's most attractive about it. Now, while the article didn't list performance as the primary driver for rustifying or oxidizing, as they say here, the author does bring up an interesting point about performance and also reliability by saying, if foundational software fails, so does all the other layers built on top. If foundational packages have performance bottlenecks, that becomes a floor on the performance achievable by the layers above. If these core utilities can get faster, then everything else can get faster. And the speed is one of the primary focuses of the UUtils project. Now, in a lot of cases, the core utilities probably won't get much faster because of writing them in Rust, because one of the big speed advantages that you actually get over C or C++ is that in Rust, multi-threading is typically much easier to implement, especially in a safe manner. But a lot of the tools in the core utilities don't actually benefit from being multi-threaded or parallelized in any way. For example, MV, CP, and RM are all file system tools. And since disk IO is fundamentally serialized, there's not much point in them being parallelized. But there are huge opportunities for the few core utils that can be run in parallel. And that's why when the lead developer of UUtils did a talk at FOSDEM this year, he did a live benchmark of the UUtils implementation of the sort command against the GNU implementation, because sort is one of those programs that actually benefits from more threads. And the UUtils implementation was six times faster than GNU's. So you can imagine the gains that something as basic as faster sorting is going to bring to basically every other program that's running on higher levels on the operating system. Now, Ubuntu isn't just going to all of a sudden pull the familiar core utilities from under their users' feet. Instead, they release this oxidizer tool, which lets users and developers seamlessly rustify and unrustify their core utilities on their Ubuntu system so that they can get used to how that's going to work before Rust actually becomes the default. And you can download this right now to your Ubuntu system from GitHub, or you can install it with Cargo, but you should still be careful with running this because it could break your system. I mean, it's making a very fundamental change to how things are working. So make sure that you have a backup. But by default, if you run this with the basic enable command, it's going to replace coreutils and sudo. Enabling all experiments is going to replace coreutils, sudo, findutils, and diffutils, and make them the default on your Linux system. So far, I haven't broken my Ubuntu VM with Oxidizer, but again, be careful if you have important data on your system. Now, of course, the Linux kernel itself has been progressively integrating Rust into it with initial support 
merged in version 6.1 and ongoing developments to include Rust written drivers. Linus Torvalds has also shown support for Rust, especially by his usual metrics. And so there's a lot of support for this language in the Linux world. And one of the biggest upsets here, I think is really too good new because if Ubuntu succeeds, with uutils and other distributions start to follow suit then gnu linux won't really be a thing anymore and it would really be a shame if gnu got dropped from linux before they're even able to finish their own kernel because without a kernel you can't really call yourself an operating system and while most people besides gnu developers are probably welcoming this rustification of the core utilities in linux there are some people that absolutely hate this change. And it's not just people that prefer C and C++ who hate the syntax of Rust so much that reading it makes their eyes bleed and hearing Rust evangelism sounds like nails on a chalkboard to them. These people are always going to be around whenever you mention Rust. But I think the real big concern here with uutils is its software license. So this Rust implementation of the core utils has an MIT license, while the GNU one, of course, has a GPL license. And by the way, I might as well mention that GNU's implementation of Core Utils isn't the only one in existence. Okay, BSD has their own, BusyBox is another, Apple has another, Unix had another, but GNU's GPL license on their code is where the real big deal is here, especially for low level programs like this. So the general public license or GPL is copy left. So you can think of it as doing the inverse of what a copy right does, which restricts the ownership and control over some intellectual property to an individual party. GPL makes things free as in freedom forever. So if you took GNU and you built upon it, you'd have to open source your improvements if you wanted to distribute them, you could technically use GPL code and make proprietary modifications and then just use it on your own system. But if you want to distribute it, it has to be open. And this prevents proprietary software in the form of binaries or encrypted or heavily obfuscated code from being added to a GPL code base. But an MIT license does not prevent this. It's perfectly legal to take MIT license code, which would be open source, and then make fantastic improvements to it or integrate it into a small part as a much larger code base. And none of the changes or additions that you made in these cases would have to be open source even if you wanted to distribute them. And it could be the case that your changes are so popular that they basically end up replacing the original open source program in popularity. And since proprietary software is a kind of evil in itself because the end users don't have any control over it, you could argue that MIT and similar licenses allow for good open source software to be more easily turned into something that is going to abuse end users. And this has already happened with Minix. So this was another Unix-like operating system that was developed by Andrew Tannenbaum, and it actually predates Linux by a few years. And Minix was initially proprietary software that was conditionally source available. I think maybe you could get the source code if you were in university because initially Minix was created to be a teaching tool. But anyway, in the year 2000, almost 13 years after Minix first came out, it was officially open sourced under a BSD license. And the reason for this was commercial viability. So as you can imagine, a lot of companies don't actually want to open source their code or they don't want to open source whatever changes they made because they don't want their competitors to get it because they think it gives them a competitive edge and yada yada. And so they're wary about using anything that is GPL. And this pretty much sums up Tannenbaum's reasoning too for using the BSD license for Minix. But this openness allowed Intel to integrate Minix code into their Intel management engine, which is basically a mini operating system that runs on every Intel chip alongside your real OS. And because of this, it's technically one of the most used operating systems in the world. 
And if you read Tannenbaum's open letter to Intel, he obviously is not super happy about the way that Intel went about this, mentioning that they should have at least given him a heads up about his OS becoming the most prolific one ever. But again, that is not a requirement of a BSD or an MIT license. You don't even have to say thanks to the person who originally developed that code. So this could lead to more excellent operating systems being poached for diabolical reasons in the future by major corporations. But what do you think? Are the fears about the MIT license overblown? Is Rust in the core utilities a good thing for Linux? Let me know in the comments below. Like and share this video to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, based.win, where you can buy my awesome merch or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% storeway discount when you pay a Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.